Risa Connection utilizes interactive connection modeling and visualization, including 2D and 3D views, for the creation of a variety of steel connections. In this video, let's take a look at designing shear connections in Risa Connection. So let's go ahead and get started with a shear connection. Opening a new model, we have the option to open the project settings window, and I'm going to leave this information as the default. Set the code to AISC 14. Next is the connection selection. On the left hand side is the module window, so we can go through the drop down menu and choose a shear connection. Here we have a list of several shear connections, column beam, beam girder, beam splice, and column splice. For SKU connections, these are available for shear tab type connections. For example, if I choose a shear tab, then open the connection. Here in the properties is an option for the skew angle for me to input. So now I'm going to choose the girder slash beam clip angle connection to get started. I'm going to create this and call it girder angle. I'm going to hit OK. So here is the new shear connection that's been created. We see the connection listed here under the project view and as we add more connections, we're going to see additional connections appear in here. In the lower right corner is where our connection properties are. This is where we can set everything related to how this connection is laid out. When I specified that I wanted to create a girder angle connection, it automatically created one with some default values input, and I can actually come through and enter in my real values. So first off, we can choose as we sort of come down through this list here, the connection title we've already entered in for the girder connection. I can choose whether that's going to be a bolted or welded connection, and I'm going to choose welded in this case. Note that when I choose that on screen, it actually flips over to show a weld there instead of bolts coming through on that girder. So everything is all live updated and is fully interactive under the beam connection. For this example, let's go ahead and go bolted. Under angle type, you can choose single or double angle. In this example, I'm going to choose a single angle. And so you'll see that now the double angles that were there before, as I toggle between them, appear and disappear accordingly. So coming down further, this is where we specify our shear load, and remember that is where I set up the global parameters as LRFD project. So therefore, when I enter my shear load, it needs to be a LRFD load. So let's enter that in here at 45 kips. Let's come down and choose a girder section and a beam section. So here I chose a W24 by 62 girder, and then I hit OK. You may have noticed everything sort of thickened up on the screen here as we got a little beefier beam shown. Or I can actually just type in a shape size, so I can actually type in a W18 by 35, and caps locks does not matter. When I click outside of that cell, it automatically updates and you see the beam gets bigger. On the left here, we have some little expanded buttons, and when I expand, I can actually control a variety of different additional properties. So you can see here that my girders were created from A992 steel. You can also go on to change your angle sizes. Let's say a four by three. In the beam and girder holes, what I can do is I can actually come in here and choose short slotted horizontal for the angle type. If I come to the 2D view of this and I take a look at my angle, I can see that these holes are slightly elongated. Down a little further, we have our girder weld. This is the weld between the angle and the girder. You can see an E70 electrode has been chosen and a fillet well. I can control the leg size here, and this leg size is going to be in the 16th of an inch. Under beam bolts, we have listed here the default bolt is a 3 quarter of an inch, A325N. 
pretty much the standard bolt. And that's what's been set up in here by default. But if I expand this out, I can set this in any number of different of ways. The intention of the program is that we set up the very basic geometry for this connection and then we start making adjustments until we can actually get the entire connection to pass. At this point, we've created our shear connection and RISA connection. For more information on other topics, please visit our website, risa.com.